The magical dust of Mount Gretna sprinkled on my childhood as I sailed through the air on my swing. I loved my grandparents' cottage and the cozy village and shaded lanes around it. I didn't know then that this special Mount Gretna magic would cling throughout my life, bringing joy, enrichment, and the realization of a dream. Lazy summer afternoons found me reading on the cottage porch. I was in awe of my favorite authors for making novels come alive with fanciful stories. Where had they gotten their ideas? One day I discovered a history book of Mount Gretna and was astonished to learn that there was once a beautiful park that brought thousands of visitors by train to picnic under the tall trees. I found those paths where the 1892 park had been. It was still there. Faded red pavilion roofs outlined against the sky. Remnants of a carousel and carved fountains were fading into the encroaching wilderness, along with the abandoned train tracks. I felt a story stirring. The magic of Mount Gretna's colorful history cried out to be brought to life. Years passed as I worked on a book, researching novel writing, the computer, and Mount Gretna itself, a labor of love about my favorite place. But publishers rejected it. I was an unknown writer. I kept trying. Then one Christmas Eve, I suffered a stroke. I lost the power of speech. My brain couldn't find words anymore. But I'm a word person. This can't happen to me, I protested inwardly. My Mount Gretna story would never be published. Perhaps it was Mount Gretna magic dust that spurred me to labor through the long hospital night, trying again and again to speak the sentences written on the paper the neurologist had given me. At first the words were so garbled, I cried. But by dawn, I could read them all, out loud. Even with magic dust, we must bow to the limitations of time. It could happen again. So I determined that I would not wait for a publisher. I would publish The Buried Treasure of Mount Gretna myself. With equipment my generous children bought me, I learned, I who couldn't operate a copy machine when I worked, to scan photos into the computer, drop them onto the desired page in the novel, and finally to burn a CD that I could send to a print-on-demand publisher. My book is published, a dream realized. Mount Gretna's Park lives on, and so does its magic dust.